Hey guys, welcome back to another video tutorial by Simply Learn. In today's session, we will be learning about Kotlin coroutines. So let's go ahead and understand what's in it for you. So in this tutorial, first we will understand threads. Then we will learn what is coroutines. After that, we will understand the features of coroutine and also we will have a look at an example of it. And at last, we will learn some of the basics of coroutines. So without further ado, let's get started. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. So, what are threads? To understand coroutines in detail, first we will have to understand the threads. So let's understand it a little. So the programs are just a set of instructions. When a program runs, a process is created, which contains memory, process ID, etc. In that process, there are threads that are used to execute information. Every process has at least one thread or more than one thread. Threads help with the high performance applications and they work in a sequential order one after the other. Whenever a thread gets stuck while running an instruction, then the other thread executes the rest of the instructions. So these were threads. Now, as we have understood about threads, so let's learn about coroutines. Coroutines stands for cooperating functions. The word co stands for cooperation and routine stands for functions. The coroutines can not only do all the things that a thread can, but is also very efficient. Coroutines are lightweight threads that help to write simplified asynchronous code that keeps the application responsive while maintaining heavy tasks like network calls. Coroutines are executed inside the thread and are also suspendable. Here, the word suspendable means we can execute some instructions and then stop the coroutine in between the execution and continue when we wish to. And they can also switch between the threads which gives coroutines an edge over threads. So as we have understood about coroutines, so now let's learn about some features of coroutine. So these are the features of Kotlin coroutines. First one is, coroutines are lightweight. Due to the support for the suspension, we can run many coroutines on a single thread, which doesn't block the thread where the coroutine is running. Coroutine has a collection of threads that can be used when required. When the task is done, the thread is kept back to the collection and reused when need. So this was the first feature. Now moving on to the second feature which is less memory leaks. There are very less memory leaks in Kotlin because of the structured concurrency. The Kotlin coroutines follow the structured concurrency. This structured concurrency means the new coroutine can only be launched in a particular coroutine scope which sets the lifetime of the coroutine. During the implementation, a large number of coroutines are launched and the structured concurrency take care of those so that they are not lost or leaked. This was the second feature. Next is built-in cancellation support. Cancellation in coroutine is interactive. In order to be cancellable, a coroutine must be cooperative. But if it is not cooperative, then it will wait for the coroutine to finish. There are two ways to make a coroutine cancellable. One, through using suspending functions through kotlin.coroutines like delay function, yield function, etc. These were cancellable. And second, using coroutine scope dot is active boolean flag. There can be many reasons to cancel a coroutine and also a coroutine cannot be cancelled if it is working in computation. Now, moving on to the last feature that is Jetpack integration. There are many libraries of Jetpack 
that provides support for coroutines. For example, Android KTX is a set of Kotlin extensions that provide Android platform and other APIs etc. The Jetpack is basically a collection of Android development components that helps in building Android apps and making complex things simple and easy. These were some features of coroutine. Now let's understand an example of coroutine. But before that we have to understand some terms of coroutines which are launch, delay and run blocking. First is launch. Now launch is a coroutine builder. It launches a new coroutine concurrently that is without blocking the current thread. It is automatically cancelled when the resulting job is cancelled and it doesn't return any result. Now next is delay. Delay is a suspending function which is used to suspend a function for a particular time and resumes it after that time. It doesn't really block the underlying thread but allows the other coroutines to run and use the underlying thread. Also it is a cancellable function. Then there is run blocking. Run blocking is a coroutine builder again. It basically runs a new coroutine and blocks the current thread until its completion. Or in other words, the thread that runs in it gets blocked for the given duration until all the code blocks inside the brackets of run block complete their execution. Now as you can see in this example, here the run blocking refer to the thread that runs it, that is the main thread. It is the scope of the coroutine. Launch. Here launch will launch a new coroutine concurrently. Then there is delay. Delay will suspend the coroutine for a selected time. Here that selected time is 2 seconds. By default the time is in milliseconds. Now here the word Sam will be printed after my name is because of the time delay for 2 seconds. On printing it, it will display my name is Sam. Let's take this example on Kotlin Playground. Here it is, here we have written that example. Here we can see there is a delay of 2000 L that is 2000 millisecond which is equal to 2 seconds. So that is why my name is printed earlier than Sam is getting printed. Let's run it and let's check the output. As you can see my name is Sam is getting printed because we have delayed this Sam for, a li for like 2 seconds and now we'll use delay here. Okay. Let's say 3 seconds, 3000 milliseconds which is equal to 3 seconds. So as you can see there is a delay of 2 seconds here is the delay of 3 seconds. Now what will happen is Sam will print first after that my name is printed. As you can see Sam my name is. So I want to show you that the, how this delay function work. Because here the delay is now 3 seconds which is greater than 2 seconds that is why my name is getting printed later. Now. Moving on to the next topic which is basics of coroutine. So first is scope builder. The coroutine scope is used to declare your own scope. Unlike run blocking, it just suspends and releases the threads underlying. It is used to set the scope for new coroutines. Coroutine scope is responsible for controlling the life cycle of a group of coroutines and their context. Scopes wait for their associated coroutines to complete before completing themselves. The coroutine builder is an extension of coroutine scope. Now next is explicit job. A job object is returned by launch coroutine builder whose task is to explicitly wait for the child coroutine completion. Jobs acts as a handle to the coroutine in the queue. For every coroutine that is created, it returns a job instance which identifies the coroutine uniquely and manages its lifecycle. Then there is suspending functions. 
Suspending functions are those functions that can be paused and then continued later. They can be used inside the coroutines and can use other suspending functions as well. They are used for long running operations and wait for it to complete without blocking. The syntax of suspending function is same as that of the normal function but with the addition of suspended keyword. So these were some basics of coroutine and with that we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.